Hi crafters, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards and today I am going to show you how to create a beautiful project using Box Kit 15. I thought it'd be really nice if you could craft along with me and maybe do the stamp along project from the Box Kit. So we're going to start by building up our base for our card. So we're going to be using our fabulous scalloped and pierced square die sets. So I've already taken the largest, which is the, um, the scalloped square die, and I've die cut that out from some crystal white pearl card. This one here. I'm then going to take one of the beautiful patterned papers from the box kit, take the next die in, which is the pierced square, pop that down over the top, and then run this through my die cutting machine. So I'm using my Gemini machine, so I'm going to use my base plate, my plastic shim, my die with my paper and my cutting plate on the top. And then we'll just run that through. And then we'll grab that at the other side. There's a little bit that just hasn't quite cut there at the top. Probably should have added an extra little plate into this sandwich. Add my magnetic in and run that back through. Grab that at the other side, open this out, and we've got a lovely die cut and pierced square. So take that die out of the way, and we will take a piece of lovely orange coloured paper from the Leafy Lace printed paper pad. So we're going to use this colour here is a really lovely orange. Our A4 printed paper pads are fabulous as well. They're great for your mats and layers or they're also great for doing your flowers and all such like really really good value um, for paper pads. So what we're going to do next is take that patterned paper and I'm going to stick it onto this orange so it's just got a very fine border going around the edge. So to stick that down I'm going to use a little bit of Kalal all-purpose glue. So just a little bit of glue all onto the back, like this. And then we'll stick that down flat onto our base card, onto our uh, orange paper, sorry. Let's get that stuck down all nice. Just got an extra little bit of glue on there, so just rub that off. Just line that up. So we just want a very fine little orange border running around the edge. And then we're going to take our trimmer. Got my little mini guillotine here. Just going to bring this in. Just start to trim a little bit off the edge. Now remember, you can always trim more off, but once you've trimmed it, you can't add it back on. So just go quite steady as you do this. Trimming away. And that'll then create the little mat for our card. So we're going to keep on building the layers up. So next, I've taken a piece of like this baby pink paper, which is again from the um, Leafy Lace A4 paper pad. And we're going to just take the next die, but we're going to use the next pierced one. So we're kind of missing a layer out, so it'll be a little bit smaller. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to tape this down into place. I always like to keep my dies on the magnetic sheets as well, just so I don't lose them. So 
So we'll tape this down like so. And then we'll take our cutting plates and we'll run this one through. I'm going to try it without the magnetic, see how it goes first. So we'll pop that through. We've got a lovely little pierced square there, ready to go on the card. So what we're going to do is take just the scalloped layer and we're going to take a little bit of scrap paper and then we're going to take our crystallina glitter, which again, it's like that chameleon. It's going to go onto everything and show the colour through from underneath. And we're going to take a chisel tip glue pen. So we're then... Just going to trace along the edge of the card and just cover that with our crystallina glitter. So it's the same technique as normal, just dragging that pen towards yourself to get that little line of glue. And that's then our first little matte and layer all glittered up. So next up what we'll do is we will take some foam pads, pop that on the back of there. We're going to give it a bit of lift just behind the project. So it's up to you which depth of foam pad to use. I'm using the three mil today, but we do do these um, foam pads on a roll in two mil as well. onto one side I'm going to just foam pad all these layers up and then they're good to go and we can get sticking together now again I like my cards to be dimensional so you can either add as many or as few foam layers as you like to your projects. If you want to keep them a little bit flatter for posting, of course you can do. You just stick some of the layers flat as, instead of putting them on foam pads. So we're going to go in now and just peel the backs off of these. And then we're going to stick this down onto our base card. Like that. layer down here and then we'll stick our pink layer on the top there we go one more foam had to come off there and we'll stick that down onto our card Right, so we'll pop that to one side and we're going to take, just want some plain white card. So I'm actually going to use a card blank so it keeps it the same colour. 
as what we'd be using. So I'm going to take my card blank and just chop it in half. And the reason why I'm using plain card as opposed to the pearl is because we're using distress inks and things, it'll just allow it to show up a little bit better. Um, like the vibrancy of the colours because the cardstock then isn't coated. So we're going to take our lovely stencil that comes in your kit and we're going to tape it down in place onto the card. So just using some low tack tape, I would like to tape across the top first and then the bottom. And what I tend to do is position my tape down onto my stencil like, like this. We go and then we lift the stencil up and then we place it down and just press and run along and then we take this bit of tape and pop it down this side here this bit of tape and pop it down the other side here and by lifting and just pressing it means that you've got your stencil kind of quite close to the card which makes it a little bit easier to work with so what we're going to do now is take some Distress Oxide ink pads. So I've got um, three colours. I've got Picked Raspberry. I've got um, Peeled Paint and Spiced Marmalade. So you can see how these colours are going to go really nicely together. And I'm using our blending brushes to blend these on. So it's kind of up to you where you want to start. I'm probably going to start with... Might start with the uh, maybe it's the pink bit of the pink first. Let's let's start with that one. So I'm gonna take my blending tool and I'm gonna go in and just start to ink the butterflies first. And you can kind of decide how much ink you want to put onto this. You can keep it quite pale and subtle, or if you maybe want to add a little bit more, of course you can do as well. So I'm going to go in and ink the flowers too. Like that. This one here. Okay, so you can see how nice that is then looking. And I'm going to take my spiced marmalade, which is the lovely orangey kind of shade. I'm going to just add a little bit of that into the middle the flowers and you can kind of have a little little look about as well if there's anywhere else that you maybe want to add a little bit of colour I'm going to add a little bit down here a little bit over here it's going to be quite loose and kind of abstract so don't worry too much about your colour placement then we're going to go in with the peeled paint and this is pretty much going to cover the green section so you're just going to go in and just ink through just want to be a little bit careful kind of where the flowers are just to kind of work around just a little bit you still want to get that green on there though a little bit in here a little bit here okay and then i'm going to go back in with my picked raspberry I'm going to go and just ink these kind of flower sections here. Now, I'm not too concerned that there's a little bit of green on them because we're going to go in and we're going to glitter them anyway. So I'm not going to stress about that too much. So, yeah, once you're happy that you've got sections that you want inked and the colours that you want them inked in, you can then peel your stencil away to reveal the design. So at the moment, it looks a little bit messy. That's fair to say, with all of that ink kind of dotted all over. But what we can do is we can start to peel that low tack tape away. And just be careful because obviously your low tack tape will have a little, a little bit of ink on it. So just be careful for your inky fingers. I've got any nails at the moment as well so that is not helping with my peeling of tape and things at the moment so let's have a little look so then when we reveal that you can then see the beautiful stenciled image that you have got 
okay if i turn that round it's really really pretty so it looks quite messy until you whip that stencil off and then it's like oh, yeah it's come together now so what we're going to do next is take our heat towel and i'm just going to give this a quick blast over just to get that nice and dry. Now, what I've already done for the next part is I've created a little frame to go around this. So I've glittered the frame in my um, chunky crystallina glitter. So to do that, all I've done is taken two dies, and it was these two here, and you can do it from the waist, from this section. Actually, no, because you're gonna get a little bit of the stencil, so maybe don't use the waist do it on a separate piece of card. But I'm gonna take the inner piece and cut my stencil out with it. So again, I'm gonna take a little bit of low tack tape. I'm gonna tape that stencil down into position like this. And then I'm gonna run this through our Gemini machine. you'll see how we've then cut that out so that's going to go in the middle so to create your frame what you would be doing is you would take a piece of card so i've got a piece of crystal white here for example and you would take your two dies do it on a flat surface because that makes it that a little bit easier so you're going to take your two dies and you're going to kind of just position them down together in that frame shape on your card. Then gonna take your low tack tape, just tape across to tape them into place. We're gonna take our plate and run this through. So your base plate, your plastic shame, and then you cut your plate on the top. And I'm gonna run that through our Gemini machine. And then when we take that out, you'll see we've got a lovely fine little frame. So that's the little part that we're gonna use. So what I've then done is covered that in PVA glue and sprinkled it with our chunky crystallina glitter. I'll fill these little gaps in once we've got it stuck on the card, but that's how you create your frame to go around the side. So before we stick this together any further, I'm going to start to add a little bit of glitter onto our stenciled design. So basically, all you're going to do is take your glitters. So I've got three different colours here. I've got crystal, pink, salsa and fiesta. So these are all beautiful colours. And you can see how these are going to work on your project. So what you can then do is take your um, Dries Clear PVA glue just go in and I'm going to add little dots into the middle of the flowers to start with and then I'm going to cover that with the fiesta and you can see how that then creates that lovely sparkly center for the flowers and then we'll pop that one back in the jar if you haven't got fiesta in your stash at home it's beautiful I would definitely be adding it in it's a lovely one for doing like the centers of flowers and things like that and then these kind of more like looping type shaped flowers, I guess, I think. <gasps> Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> and these smaller ones here, I'm going to go in and just add little dots of PVA glue. And then I'm going to cover that with some salsa glitter. So that's like a nice hot pink. So you can see how by adding the glitter it really starts to bring it to life. Go back in the jar there. 
and then I'm going to take a little bit of the crystal pink I'm going to go in and just add little dots of glue just wherever I think really so there's no rhyme or, re <laughs> no rhyme or reason to this I just kind of go for it just pop as much glitter on as you want you can add all the sparkle or not quite as much if you want to so then we'll take our glitter sprinkle that over tap away the excess it goes back into the jar And then you can see how you've got that beautiful stencil design. Really, really lovely. So then we'll take our card blank in and we'll stick this onto the front. So again, a little bit of Kalal all-purpose glue just onto the back. And we'll stick that down onto there. So and I'm going to pop that to one side and I'm going to take my little glittery frame in and then we're going to take some of our foam pads and what we're going to do is we're going to start and cut these down. So then we're making them into like little strips and that way you can then use these to stick the frame down because it is a very fine image. little foam pad here and you can just work your way around adding your foam pads on and then we'll take a couple more and there we go and then we'll just carefully peel the backs off of these. Be a little bit more fiddly to do. I'll take this and we'll stick this onto our card. This bit's always that little bit fiddly because you just need to get it lined up. So don't like to press it fully down. I like to give it a little second just to kind of rest and grab. So you can see how that started to come along now. Now what I'm going to do is where I've left these little bits here, I've got little gaps where I've obviously smudged it. Just going to go in with my PVA and then we'll cover that in the chunky crystallina. So I'll just grab that one off my trolley next to me. That's this lovely glitter here and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's literally just crystallina but a chunkier mix which is amazing. So we'll pop that back, she says, back into the pot. That's not going to happen, is it? Take a bit of scrap card. And then you can see how that then looks. So you can see how it's all starting to come together nicely now. So pop that to one side. And then we will take our little sentiment. So we've got a little sentiment which um, we've got here, which is from the Chopper Pack, which says happy birthday. So I'm going to add that into the corner. Now, what I found is our scalloped circles, this little one in the middle, fits these particular sentiments perfectly. So I like to take that to cut the sentiments out. If you haven't got the set of dies, you can, of course, you can do it with scissors if you want, or you might have another similar circle die that fits. But this just makes it that little bit easier. So we'll pop that one there and we'll run that through. So again, I'm just using my Gemini to cut that out. There we 
go. So we'll stick that down. I'm going to pop that in the top corner up here. Again, we'll use a foam pad. I don't know whether that might just be, yeah, just a fraction too big. So just trim a little bit off there. And we'll stick that down there. It's going to go just down a fraction, but that'll go in the top corner. And then we're going to take our little bowl and stick that on. So we'll use a little bit of pin flare to pop that down. So that's going to go onto here. And then we'll take a little sparkler. Why not? We'll use a smaller one. And we'll pop that down into the centre of that little bowl. Like that. And you can see, if you wanted to, you could leave the card like that. But, but we've gone a little step further. So you can see how fab that looks. But what we're going to do is we're going to add some little fairies onto it. So I'll talk you through this because I've done this so it was dry ahead of time. So I've taken my two little fairies. I've coloured them in using my Copic pens and then glittered the dresses. So I've done this one in salsa and this one just in chunky crystallina. And I've taken a piece of heat resistant acetate and I've stamped and embossed two of the fairies onto there and then flipped them over and glittered the wings in glistening ice. So what we'll do is we'll take some scissors and we're just going to cut these little fairies out. So really easy to do because you're on the acetate, you can be really rough in the way in which you trim these out. That's that one. And you can see we're just using a very, very small piece of heat resistant acetate. And I'm going to take a little bit of a collal and just pop that down the middle. And we're just going to stick that over the top like this. And there we go. And you can see how we've then created the little fairies with the glistening wings. So then you can go and just kind of add these in. So I just did them like they were dancing in the flowers. A little bit of glue on the back. Again, ordinarily you'd let all this dry. But I'm obviously trying to show you for the for demonstration purposes here. But yeah, you can just kind of position them wherever you want. There we go. And that would then be your finished card. So I hope that you have enjoyed creating this project with me. Of course, all of the products are available at www.chloescreativecards.co.uk and this one is using box kit 15. So I really hope that you'll be able to join me on the YouTube channel again.